Welcome back to Retro Rebound. In today's video, I'm doing it again, so I've got to say it again. I'm breaking out the Nintendo 3DS. However, it's not for 3DS games. In fact, we did that in a previous video, so be sure to check that out. No, my friends, we're talking about DS games. In fact, we're talking about 708 of them combined between two cartridges. Now, if you're a game collector, you've likely crossed paths with these compilation cartridges, probably laughed a little bit, said, there's no way that thing works. I'm not gonna waste 20 bucks on it. And you moved on with your lives like an intelligent individual would. Now with me, of course, having this lovely platform, it's an opportunity to educate the masses and show people where you should or shouldn't spend your money. And I thought there's no better option here than to put my money on the line, spend 20 bucks on each of these, and see what they're all about. So I took the dive for you, so you don't have to. One of these has 500 games in one, the other has 208 in one. And man, do I have some stories to share even the moment that we open the box. You'll see what I mean. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, if you are new here, consider subscribing. We're about to enter a bit of a sizzling hot time for Retro Rebound. We have a triangle strategy review on the way. We also have some Batman videos on the way with the new movie coming out. We like to sync up the pop culture releases with the old games and plenty more next week that I think you're all going to be pretty stoked about. So with that, let's get into these ridiculous compilation cartridges. So ladies and gentlemen, let's start off with when you open it. First of all, one of them came upside down. Not a big deal, right? But for me, that was a bad omen. I went, oh man, they couldn't even put the cartridge upright. In fact, I think the whole thing was upside down. So I saw that and went, my expectations are low, but not this low. Little did I know that in the next case I'd open, I'd be in for a much worse surprise. So you may have saw that in my 501 case, it came in a little plastic casing that you could pull the cartridge out of. I thought this was a little weird at first because it was just rattling around in this thing. Little did I know <laughs> that this was the right call because upon opening Mr. 208 and one, the whole cartridge fell apart. It completely fell apart. I literally couldn't believe it. It happened live on camera. I was like, oh my God, it actually fell apart. So what this did lead to, again, this is about education, is an opportunity to inform you on, I think, how all of this works. So you'll notice in the 501 cartridge that there's a little micro SD card slotted into the top of the DS cartridge. And you look at the one that fell apart and it came with this little red circuit board that's encased in the plastic casing that this thing came in and well, it fell apart. What I think is happening here is this red circuit board is what gets inserted into the DS, of course, so that it can actually read what is plugged in to the micro SD card. So it's kind of an interesting little contraption here. Never quite seen anything like it, but upon slotting it in, now let's get into the games itself. It shows SpongeBob Atlantis Square Pantis as the home screen game. I wish I was joking. I am not. This just gets more unbelievable by the moment, in my opinion. So. I'm having a good time with this. I'm laughing. I'm like, this is going to be a hilarious video. I'm just going to fire up the camera and rip this thing apart. Just tell people to steer away. But then we get to the menu of games here. Now, here's the sucky part. The one that broke, unfortunately, was the one I was most excited about. But I wasn't about to buy it again because a lot of these games I already own. But this one has all of the, there's a whole list on the back that's in very small text. But it mentions a ton of Pokemon games. It's got all the Rune Factory games, Dragon Quest games for DS, which are super expensive, the Final Fantasy games for DS, Professor Layton, a ton of Mario games. So this one is exciting me. It broke. This one, however, was still exciting, not as exciting, because it came with stuff like all the Naruto games, Ninja Gaiden, it came with some Ninja Turtle games, it came with Crash Bandicoot games, it came with some even Star Wars, Power Rangers. There was some good stuff on here. So upon firing it up, Old school retro rebound viewers may recognize a little menu like this. And I'm talking like the birthday of retro rebound. When we first started this channel, you may recall we broke open the Amazon Game Boy and we were taking a look at some of the game offerings that it had because it could be docked on the TV, you could play it in handheld, and it had a very similar menu as what you're seeing here. So that's where my expectations were. This is going to sort of be the DS version of that. Some games are going to be really off color, mistranslations all over the place, just crappy hacks everywhere. Some of them were pretty solid, like the actual games themselves. And what was kind of amazing is 
I would save my games here. Like I saved a game for Naruto Ninja Council 3. I saved a game for TMNT 3 Mutant Nightmare. And I actually went back and loaded them up and I was able to continue playing. So I know this should be expected, but to my surprise, I was able to load up a ton of other games, go back to old ones, load up those saves. So what I started to find is this might be a great thing for provide your cartridge doesn't fall apart, by the way. If you're looking to collect and you're trying to figure out what do I want to collect? Cause you don't really have demos available. I know for a lot of people reviews still only do so much. So there's only so much you can do, but now if you spend 20 bucks, you can get a handful of some of the best DS games on the platform and go, okay, I think I like this. I'm going to pick this up for my collection. Cause that's where I could see it being useful. Overall, the playability was surprisingly solid. I mean, I don't know what else to say other than it was the actual games themselves. There were some weird ones, like when I fired up Pokemon Heart Gold and you could see on the title menu, it said like, hacked by so-and-so. I'm like, God almighty, your name's right there, man. Why are you putting it out there like that? What this hacked version of Pokemon Heart Gold. And when you fire it up, little things like them choosing the Japanese language first. Like you're so used to, as someone who lives in the States, buying things and there they are in their US English version. That's uh, not always going to be the case here. And again, that's kind of to be expected. What was, you know, something that's going to bother a lot of people here is when you're tabbing through the 500 games, you learn after I'd say game, I'm going to say 50 maybe, and that's being generous, that the rest of these games here are educational games. There's a little brain age in there. Zoe 101 game. Meet the Robinsons is the 500th game on this list. A lot of math games I've never heard of. What this is also a lesson on is just how much shovelware was on the Nintendo DS because they put all the hot ones on the front, right? Crash, TMNT, Naruto, Dragon Ball. You're like, yo, this is what I want. Like, okay. And then you start to dig past 20 games and you're like, oh, okay, 500, huh? And you're thinking like there'll be some hidden gems in there. It's kind of like a lotto card in a weird way. But yeah. Overall, the experience was surprisingly better than what I thought it'd be. Yeah, there's some hilarious elements here, like the cartridge falling apart, the micro SD nature of everything. It's a little strange, but it works. It's not nearly as bad as the Amazon Game Boy we opened where the docking changed the complete color and the aspect ratio. It looked terrible. It played terrible. The controller wasn't even responsive. There was just clearly so much wrong with that device. That that's what I was thinking was going to happen here, but in fact, it didn't. Another kind of standout thing was once you fired it up um, and you saw the menu, it was this kind of dashboard full of all these different folders that I think are designed for, you could load this micro SD slot probably into your computer because I did see some people made videos on these and they were saying they like loaded it into their computer and put ROMs onto the micro SD card and were able to to play different games on there because there's like an Atari slot and whatnot. So I thought that was interesting that it's almost expansive. It's just pretty much buying the ability to have a micro SD card that you can then put your own games onto and throw into the DS. So overall, it was a, a pretty surprising lesson on where some of these games are heading because I noticed a little pickup of chatter on these compilations. And I think, again, this is due mostly to Nintendo's negligence with the eShop. It's like, I don't think people would be seeking out these types of options if the virtual console was available over on the Switch. Um, that would just be a perfect solution for all of that. But it's not. So people are just saying like, well, I want my DS games all in one place. I don't need a million and one cartridges and cases and manuals, which I completely respect. For me, I'm just buying all of them traditionally. A lot of the games on these, I already own. So for me, it was just a matter of testing and seeing what they're all about. A lot of these versions too, I should mention, are European. So there might be some slight differences. You can even see it in the box art on the front. So it's not like it's hidden from you, but you'll sometimes see like the seven plus, 12 plus versus E for everyone, T for team, that kind of stuff. Now you may be wondering, let's say you wanna have a little fun, go from game to game to game. How does one do that? Um, that's the crummy part about all of this is once you're done playing, you hit the home button and it closes out the entire application. Once you're at the home menu, then you fire the cartridge back up. It brings you to that menu. You got to tab through the list again, and there you can find whatever game you're playing. Now that's kind of the benefit of having all the best games there in the front is finding the game you were playing that you're likely going to be playing. I mean, unless some of you are going to be playing, let's, let's pick out a name here. Um, Dreamer series pop star. 
I don't know. Watch. I just picked out a game that's mildly popular. But it doesn't look that popular. Or Girls Dolly. I mean, I'm not making this up. There are some seriously crazy names. Sudoku Master. Okay. That's in like number uh, 262. You're probably not going to be going for that. You're likely going to be going for Ninja Gaiden Dragon Sword, which is number 10. So the list layout is a little bit better than, say, something like, I think, the Amazon Game Boy, where that was like, you know, there would be a Batman game in the middle of 200 games. You're like, holy smokes, man, I got to scroll through so much. Even when you're pressing the side button on the D-pad and you're going page by page, it still takes a while to find what you're looking for. And let's say you're some kid who wants to play Meet the Robinsons. You can't just go from one backwards to 500. You got to go through all 500. So it's not great. Obviously, it's not to be expected to be great. But I do think it's a good collector's alternative if you're looking to test out some games and ultimately save some money. Like you're eyeing down a bunch of Naruto games. Like this one's got all of the Path of Ninja games, Path uh, Ninja Destiny, and it's got the Shippuden and Ninja Council games. So you're like, okay, I don't know if I'm going to like all of these. I'm going to try this out and see which ones I do like. So there is that option there for you. Overall, I wasn't relatively enthused by it, but it was a really fun experiment. I mean, that's the beauty of this channel, I think, is just seeing what things like these are that normally I wouldn't experiment with. And I imagine many of you out there who value your time and money are probably like, I'm not going to do that either. So you get situations like this where I sit down, I buy them, I play them. But what I was reminded of while playing some of these games, I just got to throw it in there because I was playing like Dragon Ball Origins, right? And I was reminded of the mobile game layout of like two screens on top of each other because of the DS. So it's all split up into two screens with this bar in the middle, the hinge in the middle, right? That's kind of cutting off the image. And it just irks me because it's like, imagine if someone took their finger and laid it along your cell phone, right? And split up the image into two screens. That's kind of what happens on the DS. And it always irked me. I think it's why I went to the PS Vita because just watching some of these cutscenes, I'm like, I, I need to see what's happening like right in the middle, right in the middle. If I can see that, I can get a complete picture here. I know it sounds like a nitpick, but oh, it drove me up a wall. And seeing those cutscenes again, I was like, man, I do not miss this at all because I found myself just like flicking my eyes back and forth between both screens way too often. But that's just a whatever thing I just want to throw in there. Otherwise, fun experiment. So yeah, Shout out to eBay for always being there for us because now we get cool options like this, I guess. Overall, would I say go out and get this? No. No. I mean, again, it's really depending on a financial situation, but most collectors have an idea of like what they're going to get. Typically stuff they've played in the past that they did like buying that again. But when you're looking to find new stuff, a lot of these are the popular games. Some of them, again, like I mentioned in the 208 and one, this would have been great to know more about because it's got stuff like Dragon Quest, which is like $100 a pop. So... That could save you money in the long run, whether you just want to buy and own that or if you want to, you know, just see if you want to own it in the first place. But I, I just overall steer clear of this kind of stuff because it just ends up being a waste of plastic and shelf space. I don't know what I'm going to do with these now because I'm never going to use them. But I thought it was fun to try out anyway. So let me know what you think of these multi games in the comments down below. And of course, have you bought these before? I don't know if I'm like the only one right now talking about them, but... I know some videos are out there. I don't know if anyone's picked them up since then, but let me know. I'm certainly looking forward to seeing your thoughts on all of this because it's uh, it's mighty interesting. Rest in peace, Cartridge. Rest in peace. Anyway, thank you all so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you all in the next Retro Rebound where we're going to be talking about some Batman games, and I can't wait because that's been planned for a long while. Peace out.